10 year, 30 year, look a little something like this. Your 10 year yield is unchanged at 428.12. The two year down three or four basis points to 460.57. I'll get to foreign exchange, then we'll turn to energy. In FX right now, the euro looks a little something like this. Euro dollar 10808, positive there by about a third of 1%. Turning to energy, Guyana is calling for the immediate development of its gas resources to make the country a regional energy powerhouse. Exxon, which discovered oil in the country back in 2015, is ramping up production fast and aims to produce 1.2 million barrels a day by 2028. Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro may have other ideas as tensions continue to rise over a border dispute stretching back decades. The president of Guyana, Irfan Ali, joins us now from the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. Mr. President, thank you for being with us, sir. Let's talk about that tension first of all. You've indicated over the last few months that Venezuela has been building up a military presence near your border. Maduro has not denied that claim. Maduro and the Venezuelan government have issued a warning to Exxon about developing this opportunity in this particular region. What kind of assurances are you offering to foreign companies operating in your country? Well, the greatest assurance that we can offer is that Guyana is sure of its uh, territorial integrity. We are sure of our borders. And in 1899, our borders were settled. Uh, Venezuela participated in the settlement uh, of those borders. Uh, so there is absolutely uh, no doubt as to where our borders are. Uh, a controversy was raised by Venezuela decades upon decades after when we were going to independence. And that controversy is before the ICJ. We are a country that respects the rule of law. We are a country that abides by international law. And that is why we respectfully uh, ask Venezuela to uh, participate and be a member, uh, a responsible member of the international community and to respect the outcome of the ICJ. But we don't, uh, we, we are very sure of, of our case. We are very sure of our borders and uh, uh, investors need not to worry because their investment uh, are clearly in uh, the territorial space of Guyana. I'm sure they have their own worries, sir, and they can talk for themselves. I'm wondering from your perspective how closely you're working with the U.S. State Department and what kind of assistance they've already offered so far to you. So we are working with not only the U.S. Uh, State Department, we are working with many of uh, our regional and national partners. For a matter of fact, in the region itself, CARICOM has reiterated its support for Guyana, uh, its respect for Guyana's uh, territorial integrity, and also called upon Venezuela to participate in the ICGA process and to respect the outcome of that process. So too uh, does our neighbor Brazil, uh, France, uh, uh, Canada, the UK, the US, uh, most of uh, the international community has and, and is in support of Guyana, knowing the fundamental facts and the truth. And that is our borders were settled in the 1899 arbitral award. Experts say that the imbalance for the military between Venezuela and Guyana is 100 to 1. Yes, you're talking to your partners, but are you going to be building up your own defense capabilities? So uh, we are doing a few things. One, uh, we are investing in the modernization of our military, uh, in the advancement and use of technology, in the building up of our human capacity, our infrastructure. And, but more importantly, we are working closely with our allies. We are working uh, closely uh, with the US, with France, with the UK. Uh, we have many training, training exercises that we are uh, conducting together. We are uh, working with the regional security system. So uh, it is not only uh, what exists within the country. It is also uh, our uh, work that we're doing in the international community and our partnership with our allies and friends. The U.S. has said that this assessment of this military movement that Maduro has on the border uh, is very small in nature, size, scale and scope. Do you agree with that assessment? Look, we, we, we believe that uh, any threat uh, of our territorial integrity, any threat uh, on our borders must be taken seriously. And that is what we are doing. We are taking this uh, very seriously. We are uh, working uh, with Venezuela now and through CARICOM to, to ensure that this does not escalate because our primary focus is to ensure the region remains stable and the region remains peaceful.
that is our primary focus. Our primary focus to, is to ensure we do everything to promote that stability and peace uh, within, the, uh, within the region. But uh, in our assessment, there's a lot of assessment on, uh, on, on Venezuela and their capacity and capability and what is driving uh, this claim. But for us, it is a threat and we're taking it seriously and we're ensuring that we do everything to secure and protect the territorial space of Guyana. Mr. President, how important, how important is it, how much urgency do you feel to monetize the uh, oil and gas reserves in Guyana now before there is some sort of significant transition away from fossil fuels? Well, I think uh, uh, bar uh, the, 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 the transition, because we have to look at transition too. Um, we still have 36% of the world's energy coming from coal. You still have st you, we still have tens of millions of people around the world who are living in energy poverty. Uh, the technology on, uh, on transitional uh, energy source is uh, still not there to give us a competitive uh, transition. The capital cost of the transition is enormous. Developing countries are having great difficulties. The, the supply chain uh, of the technology uh, required for transition is still not at capacity. So there are a lot of challenges on the transition side itself. Uh, and we are we are all for the transition. We are all for cleaner energy, uh, greater use of renewable. Um, but that uh, I just want to make that point that the transition timetable uh, has challenges by itself. Notwithstanding that, we understand that we must, uh, uh, in an expeditious, safe, and sustainable way, also develop our oil and gas resources. So I think that um, the time to develop is now. The time to advance our production is now. The time to monetize is now, and that is why uh, we are working aggressively on uh, moving from discovery to uh, operation, but also importantly, uh, moving now in an aggressive way to develop the gas resources of Guyana and to integrate the gas resources into our other sectors so that our other sectors become competitive and using the gas resource as a tool to build out the infrastructure uh, capability and capacity of the country into uh, connecting the country uh, more integrally with Brazil, because once uh, we develop the gas resources, it opens up uh, the opportunity of justifying the deep water port in Guyana that can serve all of northern Brazil and building out that infrastructure to link northern Brazil to the Atlantic through Guyana that will save uh, many days in shipping time, make uh, uh, northern Brazil more competitive reduce their shipping costs, improve their infrastructure link, and advance their competitiveness. That also allows us now, uh, that natural gas allows us now to move to value, uh, to uh, upping the value chain for our bauxite, uh, which is a, a natural resource because we can now use cheaper energy to develop an uh, aluminum plant with 1.5 billion uh, uh, tons of bauxite reserve between Suriname and Guyana that can now be transition into uh, aluminium and a higher value market. That also helped to justify the uh, building out of a deep water port and the integration of the infrastructure. So this is how we're thinking about it, not just uh, the expeditious uh, monetization of the gas, but how we will use yeah. that gas to build out and widen the economic base and, and, and bring in new opportunities for the country and the region. Mr. President, when you talk about urgency, is there the sort of the, still the timeline that we heard from Exxon first quarter to approve their sixth deal uh, with respect to oil? Well, we, we are uh, examining that right now. The technical people are looking at it. So um, we, we, that, that is a technical uh, assessment that is being done. And we are working to, to move it rapidly, as rapidly as possible, but also ensuring that it, it, it meets all the conditions and satisfy all the requirements. You're going to be one of the foremost players potentially in this sector in 2030, something that is new for your country. How concerned are you about inflation rising within Guyana? Well, uh, we, we are working on ensuring that the economy is not uh, dependent on oil and gas, but all the resources from oil and gas is used to build out the other segments of the economy, making us more competitive. What we want to do is to position Guyana as a global leader in three areas. Energy security, because of what is available to us. 
and the role we can play in the region. Food security, because we have competitive advantage in the production of food, arable land, uh, huge reserve of fresh water. So uh, we want to be the leading uh, producer of food in the region. And thirdly, on climate. We want to be a leader on climate because we are already providing global leadership on the forest. We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. We have a forest the size of England and Scotland combined uh, that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon. We, are already, we already have most of the forest uh, at jurisdictional scale, uh, carbon certified, uh, ready for, for, for sale on the voluntary market. So those are the three things that we are pushing aggressively, filling out our human resource capacity. And all of this help in uh, taming inflation and ensuring also that we invest wisely. We don't drive uh, the economy into uh, uh, overheating the economy. We don't build beyond what is required for the development and advancement of our country, that we have strong fiscal policies, that the, the resources coming out of oil revenue um, goes directly to invest in areas that will grow the country, strengthen our human resource base and support the socioeconomic development of the country and also uh, save uh, for the future. Uh, so these are the things that we are doing. So we are not uh, concerned. If you look at our inflation rate in the last uh, three, three years, you will see that it has been very stable, uh, the lowest in the region. Just want to finish, Mr. President, on incentives for foreign companies to develop these natural resources. Quite clearly, this is still considered a high risk investment for many companies that have the technology that you require, including the likes of Exxon. You'll remember a number of years ago, I believe back in 2018, the IMF criticised the terms of the deal originally signed back in 2016 as being too favourable towards Exxon, that the royalties being offered to your country were not high enough. I just wonder, going forward from here, given the situation with Venezuela, how difficult it's going to be to demand higher royalties from some of these companies? So uh, we have already uh, said that we the, the, the agreement with Exxon and the Starbuck block, yes, we have, we have said this, uh, that it was highly slanted to Exxon. We have already changed the PSA. So the PSA, the new PSAs will be far different from uh, the one Exxon would have uh, benefited from in Starbrook block. We have made this uh, public. So the, the PSA is, is striking a balance because you, as you rightfully said, this is an industry also that has its own difficulties. Raising capital for uh, exploration, the cost of, uh, is, is difficult. The cost of that capital for investment in oil and gas sector is, is higher. It's not only limited, but the cost of that capital is higher, which is driving up the cost of uh, operation, which is driving up the cost of exploration. So all of these uh, are difficulties that the industry uh, is facing and will continue to face. So we have to ensure that we have a PSA that strikes the balance, that gives the country, give us the best uh, returns, but at the same time does not work in a way that drive away investment. Uh, so uh, in the recent auction that we had, we had a PSA that uh, was, uh, was shared among all those who participated in the auction. And that also we are uh, continuously looking at, not, not on the fiscal side, but more on the uh, conditionalities and, 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 and guidelines. So uh, you, you're correct. The future PSAs will be far different from that uh, that, that uh, Exxon uh, got on the Starbrook block, yep. but that difference would not be to the detriment of investors. It's a difficult balance to strike, I'm sure. Mr. President, thanks for being with us today. President Irfan Ali there of Guyana on the opportunities and the risks still ahead for that country to develop what is a massive opportunity in natural resources. Absolutely. It would change the landscape, really, of the energy map when you look at how much they are potentially able to produce in the next few years. But I'm really struck about his tone when it comes to Maduro's troop buildup on the border. The U.S. says this isn't very big in size and scope. Clearly, he's concerned about it. James Stavridis talked about in an opinion piece in December about how Maduro is actually using Putin's playbook when he was bordering up on uh, Ukraine in Donetsk and Luhansk. And potentially that's what's concerning here because this is...